Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of the one week game programming challenge. This week I decided to do Minecraft and I'm starting off by modeling Steve. Mostly what I'm trying to do is get the UV map straight so that I can use uh, default skins and import it correctly. And then I add a bit of code to make it so that I can import skins from the website and directly apply it to the model. I also work in a bit of noise but I later discard in favor of Unity's built in Perlin noise. On the second day, I set up some item interfaces, as well as interfaces that will support blocks, chunks, generators, stuff based on seeds and whatnot. The item interfaces I never got around to actually implementing, however, they are included in some of the block interfaces. So, uh, the first of a series of unfortunate events begins here. What the heck? Uh... What? What's going on? Oh, come on. Now, right now I'm looking at the overdraw. All of the blocks are being drawn at the same time, and that is not really acceptable. Nor is it acceptable for the mesh glider, which currently takes about two seconds to generate per chunk. So, I decided to switch to cube gliders. I thought that it had no chance of being better, but it actually ended up being the most efficient way of doing it. And here comes unfortunate event number two. Oh no, don't you, don't, don't you start crashing. No, no. Well, there it goes. Cube colliders make the inspector, or rather the hierarchy view, quite messy, but it ends up working out better. And unfortunate event number three coming up. There were also various chunk loading problems, uh, which I then fixed early on in day four. However, what? Notice how I'm steep. That's because my internet provider decided I didn't need internet that day. I spent several hours looking for the reason for the terrain error. Oh my god! I never realized that integers truncate towards zero. Later on I also dealt with removing the invisible faces. And... Well, it looks cool. Well, brilliant. I just had a power outage, so hopefully I can recover that last, uh... Now, the miscellaneous classes file was about 700 lines long. Oh, and now it looks like this. Uh... No. Absolutely not. 
Thankfully, MonoDevelop doesn't force you to use an autosave file. Day 5, there isn't actually much to talk about. Almost the entire day I was working on optimization. One of the main optimization things that I did was removing any contains methods, as well as initializing collections to a starting length. In day 6, I ended up fixing a memory leak that I had that I was trying to fix for the majority of day 5. Alright, well, my computer just BSOD'd for the second time. Um, again, let's check how much data I've lost. So it's a power outage and two blue screens of death. Excellent. Wonderful. I also added a texture atlas for multiple blocks. There's a bit more optimization I could have done. The total number of vertices at a given time was about 2 million, and the total number of faces was 200,000. Now since there are three edges per face, there weren't any shared edges, that's about 600,000 edges. You may or may not be familiar with Euler's formula that says vertices minus edges plus faces equals 2. 1.6 million is oftentimes greater than 2. Day 7, I did mostly graphical things. You can see me making various ores here, diamonds, emeralds, obsidian, sand. And the major thing that I implemented on this day was probably sand physics. There were other things that I implemented that I will also discuss later, but yeah, that was pretty fun to implement actually. Um, I'd made a bet with my friend on how long it would take me. I said 15 minutes. It ended up taking considerably longer. I also went through and optimized a few more bits of code here and there. First thing is the biomes. I can use these to adjust various parts of the terrain. I have two things, a height modification value and an octave bias. The height modification takes in value from 0 to 1 and changes it based on the curve, and the octave bias um, changes the influence of the octaves and the noise that it uses to generate the height maps. Left side being large or low frequency noise and the right side being high frequency noise. So right now I have it set to use uh, mountains biome. And if I hit play, give it a second to generate, um, let's not maximize on play. Okay, so there I am. You can see the terrain is quite mountainous right now. can see it's much flatter. To show off what the octave bias does, if I were to drop this down and bring this all the way up, you can see while it's the same height there's a lot more um, jaggedness to it. And I can adjust all of this within the editor itself. So if I wanted to make a desert or something like that, that maybe had like an oasis or two. I could probably accomplish it by doing something like this. Though I will need to change a bit of code to get it to spawn um, sand blocks. Oh, whoops. Turn. There we go. Derp, derp. Oasis of sorts. And also to show off that the terrain is in fact infinite. got a bit of an ocean here. 
So yeah, that's what uh, increasing the scale did, was it made it larger so that the low frequency noise had the most effect and it stretched it out farther. So we now have like an ocean type thing, much more than just a small oasis. And here we have the final result for week one, episode one of the one week game programming challenge. Random terrain generation, beaches, biomes, well, and biome, I guess. And awesome in image effects because Unity 3D. In place blocks of different types. And there's sand physics. And you can go really, really high. Them sand physics were just like in the original, the real Minecraft. And if we look under the ground, there are ores scattered randomly about. There's some coal. Oh! Redstone up there in the top left. Iron right here. Um, that is sand. Some lapis that I just destroyed. Useless lazuli. Some gold. There we go. No diamonds or emeralds yet, but I assure you they're there. Oh, there we go! Found some. Some genuine diamonds. Spawning in a vein. Alright, see if we can find some emeralds. Light! I see light! Alright, so unfortunately I couldn't find any emeralds, but we did find those diamonds. I don't see any water around here. Alright, I like this place. I think this is a good place for my uh, epic house. Beautiful. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess it's time to show off one last thing that I've done, and that is the ability to spawn in people with arbitrary names. So, 
We'll go up here. Oops. Destroying the house. Excellent. Um, Paul Soares Jr. And I hit enter. Steve for a second. And now it's Paul. I'm a survivor through and through. <laughs> Livid coffee. And there's Launa. And I suppose we could do Notch as well. Notch. Let's see here. Uh. And enter. Why does he have a black head? And yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. Got a nice crew here. Um, huh. And so ends episode one of the one week game programming challenge. Had a lot of fun doing it, and I'm looking forward to the next one, which brings me to my next question. What would you like me to program? I'm personally leaning towards Super Mario 64 or Galaxy, but feel free to comment below with any game you'd like to see me try. This has been Craftsman Beck. Thank you very much for watching.